Hey guys, now in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at pool cleaning products that are going to help you, especially during the season that you open up your pool. And my pool is super messy. We just opened it today, and I want to show you how both of these products that we have here are going to help you get your pool ready for pool season. We're taking a look at this robot. This is a brand new robot. This is the Scuba S1. And we also then have this stick vac that's going to help me clean my pool and get it ready for pool season. So I have to say, make sure you brace yourself. My pool is dirty. It just was open, but it will get sparkling clean as soon as these guys are done. Let's go ahead and check it out. So wait, don't, don't. All right, guys, now we're taking a look at the Aper Scuba S1. Uh, we have looked at products from Aper before on the channel. Uh, we do have an in-ground pool. It is salt water based, and these have done a fantastic job our previous season running our pool, keeping it nice and clean. And today we're taking a look at this new product, which is again, the S1. Now the Scuba S1 is a cordless robotic vac that Basically, you just drop it in your pool, and it's going to take care of the pesky job of keeping your pool clean. Uh, this is something that I love to have because, again, it's completely cordless. There's really nothing to do outside of just taking it out of the pool and then just emptying out the basket. So this is going to be able to support cleaning a lot of different materials. So first of all, if you have sand in your pool, twigs, leaves, pet hair, this is going to take care of it. It's going to suck it up and it will take care of it for you. Now, one of the things I do like about this robot, and we're going to go into all the features in a couple seconds, is that this robot will also uh, take care of your walls, the bottom, and also even go up to the water line. So it has various modes it's going to allow to take care of all those areas that you, know, that you would have to handle if you're doing it manually. Now the robot is uh, super intelligent and has now the robot is super intelligent has this technology called wave path navigation and it's a second generation of its type which means that what it does now it has this cool tech called wave path map now just like a car where you have like GPS navigation to get you from one point to another this guy has a navigation system called wave path navigation 2.0 so this is the second generation of the solution and what it does is it maps out your pool as it's going through your pool getting the most optimal way to clean your pool and do it in a really fast way now this robot does have four cleaning modes as we mentioned one is auto which is going to do your wall your water line your floor wall mode floor mode and then an eco mode, which is going to do only the floor only periodically. And that's going to extend like the battery life because this is a rechargeable robot. Now, one thing that you may have noticed um, in this review. Now, one thing that you may be noticing is on the side here, we do have another product that we're going to be talking about as well as part of this review. And this is the Pilot H2 that I'm going to show you in a second. This is a stick back that you can use to take care of those pesky areas that are difficult to get to, like the steps, the corners of the steps. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. But let's go ahead and continue to focus on this robot. Now the robot does come with the charging cable. I just want to show you what the charging cable ha looks like. And you'll notice the plug, it plugs in right in the back. You'll, we'll see. Now the robot does come with the charging brick and here you have the actual charging port that will be connected to the back of the robot. And by the way, that port is securely uh, closed with the rubber plug to make sure that there isn't any water that uh, affects that. And it's advised that before you do any kind of charging to make sure that port is dry. Now on both sides of the robot, what you're going to find is that it has this caterpillar type tread, almost like a tank, right? That basically is going to give it a lot of grippiness as it's going um, down in the water uh, in your pool, as well as at the water line. It has no problem climbing walls. Now, one thing you may be asking yourself, well, how long? Now, the battery life on this robot is rated at 150 minutes, and it's going to be able to handle pool up to 1,600 square feet. That's pretty significant for something this small. The pool type that you'll be able to use this robot in as well is going to be an above ground, an in ground. If you have a chlorine based pool or even a salt water based pool, you'll be fine. In my case, I have an in ground salt water based pool that I have this running. And one of the things I really like about this is that this also includes a hook that basically connects to this part right here where you see my hand. Uh, because when the robot is completed, it's one, let's say it's routine when you power it up and you you put it into whichever mode you want to go to, it will always come back to a corner. So you're not having to fish for the robot in the middle of the pool. You just come to the side, put the hook right here and lift it up. And it, it actually, as you're lifting it up, the water kind of just comes out. So if you've ever worked with a robot before and you try to take it out of a pool, sometimes it's so heavy that you can't take it out. Not the case with this robot. 
Now here in this top, I'm just going to show you something. We're going to go ahead and open this up. You'll notice that it opens up almost like if it was the hood of a car. And then inside you have the compartment that has all of the debris. It's a very thin mesh here, which means it's going to do well with catching sand. And here at the bottom, you can see this is where the suction takes place. And it's a really powerful robot, right? When it comes to uh, sucking all the debris that you may have in the bottom of your pool. I haven't had any problems with this running or keeping my pool clean. And the only maintenance, if we can call it maintenance, is literally this is all this requires. You come to take the robot out, you open this up, pull this out, you empty it, and once you empty it, you close it, you put it to charge, and you're set to go. Now in the front of the robot, you do have the power button. Uh, it's kind of bright outside. You have an LED here that will light up and tell you the current state of the robot, and you'll see some icons that will show you what mode it's in. Now we went ahead and powered up the robot and you can see here, you can see the actual color. Uh, this is indicating that it's currently on and there's also four different icons that will light up, one in each corner indicating the type of cleaning that it's about to take place. In the front of the robot you do have some rollers. These rollers are going to assist as it's going through your pool, pulling the leaves in. Also it's going to scrub your water line. It's soft to the touch so this isn't abrasive at all so you don't have to worry about the pool type that you have. I happen to have a fiberglass pool but if you had any other type of material, you really don't have to worry because this is not going to damage your pool. Now, for those of you who are curious about the bottom of the robot, at the very bottom, you do have a little suction area right here, and you have a guide path where all the debris gets uh, guided into this area. It does have a powerful suction, which means that, you know, a lot of your debris is just going to come in through here, and you notice that it has kind of like this little fin area here that kind of keeps it in, and as it's moving, this is pushing it this way, this is sweeping it forward, everything is going to be going in, and obviously the tread is just going to heat, keep the robot moving either underwater or above water as it's going to your water line. Now in the back of the robot, you do have this plug here, and this is where the actual charging port gets connected, the one that we have right here, right? It goes connected into this area, it's important. And then there's even a notice here that states, make sure that you keep this dry. You don't wanna plug in your power port with this wet in any way. It does have a really deep plug, and you can see it even goes into these contact points right here. So all you do is once you're uh, done charging it, you wanna make sure that you have this a position pushed in just like this and then you're set to go now the next product we're taking a look at right here is the pilot h2 and you can see here uh, on an angle now this is a stick back right and this is great because at times you could have something that's in the corner where the robot the larger robot isn't able to get to um, i actually love using these this is rechargeable uh, at first when my wife saw this she thought that this was an home style stick back i said no this is for the pool and she said wow it looks like the one that we have in the house and it has a lot of similar features so here you have a removable filter so this is where all the debris comes in and this is twist to remove and then as we bring this piece on camera let's bring this over what you'll notice is that there are no moving parts you know there are some rollers that are here that just assist with the gliding some brushes that you have in every corner and then this is where all the debris comes in now the filter tray is removable. You can see that it's small here, it's compact, but literally the only maintenance you have to do is periodically take this out. I typically do this after every usage. Empty this out, put it back in, slide it back into the container, and just leave it charging. The charging base does very much look like a home vacuum. So all you do is you put in your house to charge and you're set to go for the next run. At the very top of the robot, you're gonna find a power button and that power button will allow you to turn it on. And for those of you curious about on the battery life, you're looking at about 70 minutes worth of usage, right? And this is gonna work for a variety of things. It's gonna work for pools, it's gonna be uh, working for hot tubs, spas, above and in ground, right? So don't be worried by submersing the entire unit underwater. We actually do. And sometimes if we need to go deeper, what we have is our pool stick. We actually, uh, that we use like just to pull debris, we can connect it to this by replacing the top um, handle, and then we just submerge it 100% underwater. No worries there. Now what you notice here is your power button that lights up this, telling you that it's connected. And then this is the actual um, handle itself, which is removable, right? And you'll notice that this looks just like the, the pole that you use when you're skimming your pool at the very top, removing, um, again, any kind of leaves or debris. And you can see that the connector right here looks like, if not is, the same type. So that's why you can just swap it out. And then when you want to put this back in, you would. So I go between these. This is typically what I would have if I'm just cleaning the steps. Sometimes I'm in the pool while I'm doing that. Um, if I'm going to be using the pole, I'll just remove this and then connect it, and you're set to go. And it just takes a couple seconds to do. 
All right, guys, so as I mentioned, our pool was just open, and there's a couple things that we go through. So our pool gets covered, and you can see that basically I have a portion of it that looks cleaner, and then I have a portion of it that looks not so clean. This is what happens with Chicago winters. We have a cover in our pool. The cover was just removed, and my pool was just treated. So what we're going to do, or actually it's been treated several hours ago, just to take the green out, and you can see that we have some leaves still going in there. We have some stuff going down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have, again, the scuba, uh, go in and take care of cleaning this area. Now, a couple things that you'll also notice and that we mentioned as we were doing the review, the robot will, once it's done, will always come into a corner. And then what you'll do is you'll just pull it out with the actual hook that's included. And it's going to hook right here in this area, right? So that will allow you to hook it up. And then what we're also going to do is while this guy is working, I'm going to use the S, uh, the actual H2, I believe it's called. Let's bring this back in camera. Yeah, it's the Pilot H2 that we have right here. I'm going to be using this guy to kind of get to the steps and the areas that I typically find that the robots don't work. And frankly, this guy's going to be able to help this uh, robot right here pick up some of the larger debris that's in the pool because this is what fell in during cleaning. Now, to power up the robot, all you do is press this button. Now, when you power it up, it's going to default to the very first position here for cleaning. But as you tap the button, it's going to go through every single setting. So I'm going to turn it on. And you'll notice it's in the first one, which is the complete one. And as you tap, there's a little icon indicating the type of cleaning that it's going to go through. I'm going to go ahead and go with the basic one that does all the cleaning because I needed to get everywhere. And then the robot will start making some noises. And all I'm going to do now is just drop it in and let it sink to the bottom. And it's going to go ahead and start doing its thing. Let's get a little bit closer so you can see it start to function. Right? You can see it going down now. And boy, does this guy have a lot of work to do. Now, those of you who are pool owners can realize that, especially when you're starting your pool for the season, especially here in the Midwest, there's a lot of cleaning that has to be done. So this guy is going to go all the way to the bottom, and he's going to start um, cleaning. Now, our pool was shocked very early this morning. So right now it's in the afternoon. I wanted to give this enough time for the chlorine to dissipate. This is a salt, uh, our salt chlorinated pool. So I have a salt system connected. And what you'll see is in a couple seconds, it's going to start to kick off. So we're going to just watch it, and there it goes. So you can see how well this guy is cleaning as it's going over the surfaces. And, and it's immediately uh, sucking up everything and coming up on the wall. You can see that. And it'll just go ahead and map out the pool, because this is the first time that it's running in the pool, and clean everything up. And you can see how it's slowly making its way up to the, to the skim line of the pool. There it goes. And then it's going to go ahead and drop back. This is really important for me because I do want all the walls scrubbed because, again, uh, the pool, at least here in the Midwest, gets uh, filled with uh, some antifreeze uh, com combination with the water just to make sure that we don't freeze and are ready to go. So you're going to see how the robot's going to continue to move. And what I look for in a robot is that as it's cleaning, that it basically lifts up where, the, where it's you know, passed over. So you'll notice right here it's going over it, and you'll notice that as it passes up, that area is completely clean. And that's what you're looking for in a robot. You don't want it to leave anything behind. And this guy has great suction, and also is going to be very intelligent. It's going to go around. So what we're going to do is we're going to let it work over here, and we're going to move over to the stick vac so you can see that work. All right, while this guy is running, the scuba one is running and cleaning things up, I'm going to go ahead and start the actual pilot uh, in the and then get the pilot in the water. So now I'm doing it over here just so that we can have both on camera so you can see both working, right? And what we'll do is we'll see how well this guy does as it starts to clean. Now I feel in the stick itself, I actually can feel the vibration of it actually uh, pulling um, actually debris. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here in this area. Let's make sure that I'm still visible. We'll tilt a little bit over here. There we go. And I'm just going to go over this area right here and just clean this. So all I'm doing is, again, just like if you were using this in your home, you're just going over it. I'm going to go to the bottom a little bit, and I'm going to try to see if I can clean a little bit of the area that the scuba went through and see how well it does to pick up some of the debris that's down there. And it's, you'll notice that as I'm doing this, it's actually, it is helping, right? I'm going to go over here in the corner. So you can see an area that hasn't been touched yet. So you can see how much this guy picks up. And notice the path that it cleaned up right there. You guys can see that, how it just cleaned everything up that area right there. And that's good, right? So 
working side by side with this uh, with the scuba, we should be able to take care of this floor really quick. And remember, the basket is going to pick up all of that debris that's in here. So you'll notice on here, I have some leaves. A lot of these leaves have been here all season. So you'll notice that as soon as I go over them, they kind of like dissipate into dust, right? And two things are going to happen. Either my pool robot is going to pick this up or the skimmer is going to pick it up, right? The whole point is you'll be able to get into those areas that you can't catch. Now, let's go ahead and switch to the steps because that's where this guy's going to come in handy. All right, so now this is the area that most robots have a problem with. And this is where these two together become a really powerful combination, right? So what I'm going to do is it's going to go over the area that I know that sometimes these robots have a problem with. Even though they can get on top, there's some corners here that I know it's not going to get to. And I'm going to do the same thing on every level just to help the scuba guy out, right? Get this guy right here done really nicely. Do the same thing on this level. This guy is still pulling debris. And I can hear it right there, making noise as it's still vacuuming. And getting, again, all those hard to reach places. I'm gonna do this corner too, because I know sometimes it's hard to get into this corner. I'm gonna go a little bit slower right here so that it can bring everything up. Now, for those of you who are curious about how much was captured, <laughs> look at this guy right here. That is full of yucky stuff, right? So I could just empty that out. If I open this up right here, you can see all the, the nasty that was picked up. And some of it is, again, just muck from, uh, from the season. Close that up. We'll continue cleaning a little bit more. All right, so let's uh, take a look at how well the robot is doing on this side right here. And you can see that it's still working. There's a lot to do in this pool. So we're going to have this run a full cycle. But you'll notice that it is going up and down the wall. You'll notice that there is some debris that's left right there, but that's expected, especially when you're doing a first season cleaning, because uh, as it's moving the stuff that's to the left or to the right, it's not just what's underneath it. So underneath it, it's actually picking everything up, but as it's disturbing the, the kind of like the soot or whatever kind of dirt, it's not soot, but the, the, the nasty stuff that's on the walls, um, it's moving to left and right. Uh, probably what I would do is I'd have this run two cycles, charge it, have a second cycle, and then it should be able to have a crystal clean pool bottom like I would expect. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.